So, I heard a lot of you guys asking how you make weapons for Blade and Sorcerer U12, so here's my updated tutorial. If you haven't already downloaded Unity, check out the video in the upper right corner, and once you've done that, we can get into it. Okay, now assuming all of you have downloaded Unity already and installed it like this, it should look something relatively like this right here. Well, what we're going to want to do first is get a model for our weapon. In our case, we can easily go to Sketchfab, link in the description, and we can get all these free models. I'd recommend you just click on downloadable right here, and you can easily scroll through everything. In our case, we can search for something like sword. Let's have it be downloadable. And why don't we go to most viewed right here? Let's scroll down past these models that are unnecessary. And why don't we do the master sword? Because I'm sure this is a very popular one that the majority of you guys are familiar with or at least the Zelda fans. Make sure to click on download 3D model. And if you don't have a Sketchfab account already, just create one real quick. And once you've logged in, go down to 3D model again. And the main type we're gonna want are FBX and OBJ. Press download and it'll download. Open it up right here. And we have our source and our textures. Now, just keep in mind, sometimes in the source folder, it'll have another zip. You're going to have to go into that and extract both the source and the textures within it. But for now, since it's like this, we can copy it and paste it over to our folder like so. And head back into Unity. Now, I'd highly recommend you create a separate folder named Weapons or something like that. In our weapons folder, since I know what it is, the Zelda sword, we're just going to drag these two in. Close out of this. Drag in our model. Just like that. And now we have all of our textures for the model. Very first thing I'm going to suggest to make the build size for the model smaller is simply going to crunch compress and leave it as 2048 automatic and press apply. Now, this isn't necessary to do, but it will definitely decrease the size of the final build. Okay, great. So we now have our sword in Unity. Time to actually apply everything and make it a weapon in Blade and Sorcery. First up, we have the Master Sword right here. Unpack it completely, and what I'm going to suggest is right-click, create a game object, and name it Master Sword, like that. Drag the model right here underneath it, and just so that we don't get confused, I'm going to name it Mesh, or you can name it Model or something like that. Once we have this right here, you'll notice that our position and rotation is completely different. Make sure to select both of these by control clicking both or shift clicking. And go to each one of these values and set them to zero. In this case, zero rotates it like this. Well, we do want it to be pointed straight up just for purposes of editing it. So we can rotate it like that. And you'll notice it's not completely straight. Well, we can also type in the values. So if we set it to 90 like that, we have our master sword completely straight up and down. Now that we have our sword, we want to actually apply these textures to it. So we right click, create, and we want to create a new material. Material name doesn't really matter, especially if you plan on modding a lot of weapons. You don't really need to name it because it's just tedious work. So we drag in our Albedo or our base map right here. Our normal into our normal map. It will look very weird like this. Make sure to just press fix now right here. And there you go. And then there will most likely be another map labeled metallic or something like that. So you can make it shiny. You can drag it on. Or what we can do is leave it like this and customize it. The entire weapon shininess ourselves. So all we need to do is drag this on right there. You can zoom in and drag this down right here to just give you guys a nice close up. And notice it is not shiny at all. Well, a couple cool things that I'd recommend is if we drag this to somewhere between 6 and 6.5, you'll notice it gets a little bit shinier. And then with the metallic map right here, we can actually give it shine. I'd recommend keeping these both between 0.6 and 0.65. But there you go. So now we have our Master Sword and it's nice and shiny. And if it does look like this, you can turn off this light right up here. That way, the scene lighting does not apply to it. We go up, 
and from here now we scale our weapon so it doesn't look too gigantic or too tiny when it's in game go back to assets and we want to go to SDK examples and let's grab our character so we drag in our test character like so and this is what it looks like now keep in mind this might be very distracting all you need to do is click on this right here and it turns it off so then you can focus on everything now what i highly recommend you do is play around with these tools right here now, the first one just drags and grabs everything around but what i'd recommend is using this right here now this allows you to scale whatever it is rotate it and move it all in one tool it's very very important especially if you don't want to do the tedious work of switching between all the separate ones but now that we've gotten this together we can turn this so that we're perfectly rotated and i gotta be honest with you guys i think this size is actually pretty great so far we hold it up to our character's hand the size looks pretty decent we can scale it up just a little bit though let's make sure we do Control z and set it back to its original position and if we open this up make sure to always keep the parent or the very very top one of these game objects the scale at 111 the other ones we can change it so for this i'd recommend increasing the scale just a tad so if we do 1.21 that should probably be good when we hold it in game it looks to be better sized we do Control z again it brings us back to where we were all right now we have our scaled weapon so we can delete our test character make sure to constantly do Control s and save if you haven't saved already this window will pop up and you can just name your unity save whatever you like in my case i have this one named blade and sorcery unity or you can name it something just like blade and sorcery save it and if we go back to assets blade and sorcery is right here this will allow you to switch between your scenes if that doesn't make a lot of sense to you know that each one of these is eventually used for a map but in our case we can use this for weapon making in any event we can go back to our weapons and i just want to keep this here for now so this is our master sword well yeah it's pretty cool but we want to make it even better don't we so why don't we actually make it so we can use it in game that'd be pretty important so we go to our parent game object go to add component and we type in item what we want to do is add in our item component which will automatically add in these right here and apply a rigid body to this now a good thing about the scripts is that it will tell you when there's issues with it right here but for now let's get started making this so our title is master sword so if we click on that we'll already select it Control c and then Control v to copy and paste bam our item id and something very cool that was just added is if we hover over these it'll actually explain what each of them do so i'm very happy about this because this wasn't in the previous version so whoever added this props to you but now we want to go to our holder point and we can actually change it so this is the way that the character will holster the weapon in our case just have the blue arrow pointed up or down so just like that in our case let's set it to negative 90 and that is how it will be holstered we want it normally set at the handle and this is what it looks like right here now we have our parry point so whenever we want to parry and actually have the enemy step back we need to add in our parry target script right here if we drag to the side you'll notice we can't see it at all well why is that make sure to re-enable this right here and we'll notice we have this white line it does get a little bit tough to see so i'd recommend you use this tool just to check it out but if we do Control z move it back we can drag it up and we want it to be the length of the blade so why don't we set it to 0.35 drag it to the side and i gotta say that is pretty good let's drag it up just a tad and then set it to 37 and i think we are golden so let's take a look and that's perfect spawn point is something very new just how the weapon will actually spawn if you decide to use an item spawner or anything like that so what i'd recommend is easily just angling this arrow up we can set the blue arrow to 90 and can leave it right at the handle right here finally our preview what we want to do is get it in between this red and green arrow so we set this to 45 and we want to drag this red right here 
narrow doesn't actually do anything. This is how the preview icon will look in the book when we're going to press equipped or spawn. So if we shrink it, this looks to be a perfect size right here. So I'm going to keep it just like that. And now that we've set up our preview, we have set up everything that automatically is created when making a weapon. Now we want to make it so we can actually hold the weapon in game. So what do we need to do? Add our handles. So right click, create an empty and just name it handle. The naming for this one is very, very important because it pertains to exactly how it's supposed to look in the JSON. So if you're one letter off when adding this to the JSON, the handle will not work and the weapon could not spawn in game. So we go to add component and just like before, we want to add a handle component. Now don't be overwhelmed. You don't need to know what all of this is. All I'm going to do is take it down right here. And what we want is our green arrow pointed up and our blue arrow pointed toward whichever side we want to grab. In our case, we want to turn it negative 90 degrees. And I like to have them be directly in the center of whatever grip. Also, if you press F on your keyboard, it allows you to zoom in without needing to move anything. This is it perfectly. Blue arrow pointed to the side. It doesn't really matter for making a standard sword. For making other weapons like axes that you only want to have one side or something like that, you can change right here to have the allowed handle side only be one or the other. But I digress. So this is what it looks like right here. You can only grab this with one hand right now. If you would do more than that, we need to increase the axis length. Now you'll notice that these two white circles formed. What we can do is drag these down and we want to add just a little bit of extra room in here because our hand might clip. But with leaving this extra room right here, it shouldn't. And would clip if we did something like this right here with both of these ends right toward the end of the weapons. So let's put it back. And now we have our two-handed master sword. One other cool thing right here is you can also change the default axis grab. So you guys see that yellow circle right there. That is where our hand will start off grabbing the weapon. It's a great tool to have, especially if you want to make the axis length really long and use a spear. And last but not least, we want to update to new orientations. And like this, now we have our normal right and left hand orientations. To change these, just click on them both again. Control D to duplicate. From here, what I'd like to do is create an empty, drag them both underneath. Our empty is at that exact point. And then from here, we can change them around like so. So in our case, we can just set this to 180. And now we can grab with our hands on the other side, duplicate it again. Instead of putting 180 in the Y, we can do 180 and X right here. Now we can grab upside down. And then one final time, what we want to do is do 180, both hands. Simply select all of these right here and drag them under the handle. Delete your game objects and voila. We click on handle here and now we have every handle orientation we can grab. So we can grab our weapon any which way we want. Just make sure that the orientation default is the way which your blue arrow was pointed. If you did it the way that I did, it should say it. If you want to change the way your hand looks when grabbing a weapon, this is also something that was recently added and very, very handy. We can change our target and our default poses. So we have our handle default, and let's say I want to grab something very, very large, like a neck. Well, we can actually do this and have our default handle be a gigantic hand like this. So our hand is basically wide open, So especially if you want to grab something with a very, very thick handle. This is what I highly recommend you use because I use grapple neck on the bottom personally. But let's remove this control Z a couple times. Put it back to normal and control s to save now that we have our handle set up right click create empty and we want to create a collider group for our blade just add in a collider group script right here and this is also where we can add a wish point our effects if we want our weapon to have an imbue but i'll get to that in a moment first step while this is like this zoom out we want to right click and this is where we're going to create our colliders. 
So colliders will allow the weapon to actually interact with the physics of the world. If a weapon has no colliders, it'll phase through everything. So with colliders, you can actually touch the weapon. So there's three main colliders. You can actually see them right here. We have box, capsule, and mesh. Box colliders are best used for slashing weapons. Capsule colliders are best used for blunt. And mesh colliders kind of suck overall, but I'd recommend using them for maps because they make it a heck of a lot easier. So we're going to do what I always do. Grab our box collider. And you'll notice it is gigantic. Just look at that. It's bigger than our weapon. So first up, we're going to want to add a material, which is our blade. Because we want it to have that metal sound when hitting something. You want it to have different sounds like the dirt sounds, the pottery sounds, or flash, glass, leather. There's a bunch of them. But for a typical sword, let's just leave this as blade right here. Make sure this is set up properly. And we can use this to change it. Now you can edit the collider directly like this. It's really whatever you guys want to do. It doesn't matter all that much. Just click on it again to change that. I usually end up doing it just like this. And I've never had any issues on my weapons. Make sure to change both sides. And while it may be tempting to zoom in and get this as teeny tiny as possible so that it lines up perfectly, keep in mind you want your blade to still have collisions with stuff. If it's too thin like this, sometimes your weapon will phase through. So I'd recommend making it just a tad bit bigger because honestly nobody's going to notice. And this is what it looks like. Let's trim this just a bit. And I think we're good for our weapon's blade. Next, we can click create another empty and this time name it collider blunt and just like before we want to add in a collider group if you guys want to make a blunt weapon keep in mind you don't need a collider blade you only would need the collider blunt and the blunt damagers that i'm going to be getting to in a minute but for now again simply right click and since we're going to be doing the handle first we want to set this to metal instead of blade because we don't want blade sounds on the handle but we still want it to be metallic drag it down crank it and what's something unique is if you drag this right here it makes it larger but if you grab the green one you can actually make it look like a capsule so i'm going to shrink it just a bit more press f on the keyboard and i think that looks pretty good increase it let's maybe shrink this a bit And now we have our handle. Another thing you guys can do if you really want to be a perfectionist is do something like this. But keep in mind, while you do want your collisions to be good, it isn't completely necessary to make a million different teeny tiny colliders. Always just make sure that it's lined up properly because sometimes if your weapon is off-centered, you could be making your colliders right here and that wouldn't work very well in-game now, would it? And again, Let's create another box collider, and what we're going to do is this right here. Now, it doesn't need to be perfect. It does need to be pretty good, though. We go to metal. And one other thing I want to explain to you guys is that doing Control d copies whatever it is entirely. So you'll notice we have metal in this location right here. If we do Control d it makes a copy of it exactly. So from here, if we press F, we go down... We want to do this little winged part of the blade. And it can be angled, so let's do it something like this. Do Control D. What I'd recommend doing is just removing the negative if you have it centered up properly. Do the same thing right here, and now your colliders are exact opposites or mirrors of each other. And we can do the same thing right here. Let's do this. Rotate it. Zoom in, and I think that looks pretty good. Let's duplicate it, and we can add in a couple negatives, or remove one like so. This is our weapon. One thing, of course, we select all these. Turn, we can edit them all at the same time. So if we go like this, bam. And, of course, I always like giving it a once-over just to be certain that we did it all properly. This is what it looks like. I'd say it's pretty good. Okay. Now that we have our colliders, we need to make them do damage, right? So let's create an empty at the Master Sword point again. 
and notice I tried creating it and it didn't actually go there. So I'd recommend you always click on the parent game object and create it from there. If not, you know, you can always just drag it and it'll put it automatically on the bottom. And notice that worked. So let's set it to zero, zero, zero. And what we're gonna want is our pierce damager first. So let's type in pierce, add in the damager component, the collider group, which we just made, our collider blade, we can drag it right in. Or if we click on this right here, select collider blade. There you go. And now that we've added that, we want our direction to be forward and our depth to be, let's do one to start. And if we turn it, you'll notice that it's based on the direction of the blue arrow. So we need to turn it facing this way again. So let's set it to negative 90. And let's move it way up there. If we drag it like that. We want it to be right at this tip. And if we drag it over, you'll notice we will be piercing throughout our entire weapon. But we don't want that. So let's set it to 0.7. And I'd say that's fairly good. You can pierce with the entirety of the blade. Make sure that your pierce is actually on the blade itself. You want it to be on the same as the colliders. And yes, you can add it with a collider only, but I'd recommend you just keep making separate collider groups if you want a blade with multiple different pierces. The same thing goes with all the slash damagers and blunt damagers. But now our weapon will be able to pierce. So what we can do is Control D to duplicate. Let's set this to be zero. And we can rename our pierce to be slash, or you can recreate it entirely. It's completely up to you guys. Now for the slash damagers, it gets a bit tricky. So this depends on what you want. In our case, we're using forward and backwards because it's a sword. Let's drag this to the middle of the blade. We want our pierce depth to be 0 0.01. And our depth to be set to 1 just for the moment. Now if we zoom in, you guys will actually notice this is rotated incorrectly. So what we need to do is instead of it being negative 90, let's set this to zero. And the way that we want our blade to actually slash is based on this blue arrow again. So if we want it to slash to both sides, let's set this side to negative 90. Now if we zoom in, you'll notice the red arrow pointed this way and this way. That's good. That means we'll be able to slash on both sides. But if you wanted to only slash on one side, you would set it to forward. So if you guys have an ax or anything like that, it will only slash on this side. And of course, we use our penetration length to actually change this right here. So if we set it to 0.7, that is pretty good. Let's drag it down just a tad. And if you guys want your weapons to actually go into enemies when you stab them, I'd recommend playing around with this value right here. I like it set at 0.01 or 0.001 so it can just slash them like normal. But if you want it to go actually inside of an enemy, you can set it to 0.01 like this, and you can actually customize the value and see it right here. So that is how much it would go into it. But in our case, let's set it to 0.001 again, and set it to forward and backward. Take one last look. Last thing, if you guys are just duplicating like this, I highly, highly recommend checking over everything. You'll notice my collider group, I left it as collider blade. In this case, it's okay, but if I was to do that for the blunt damager, which I'm gonna do next, it wouldn't work properly. So what I'm gonna do is recreate it entirely. We can simply drag that up, rename it to blunt. Keep in mind, collider blade, blunt, pierce slash blunt, and handle all need to be named exactly that. While it can be changed, it's very good if you keep your naming similar for every weapon and add in our damager component. For blunt weapons, it's extremely easy. All we need to do is drag in our blunt group and leave it as all. If you try to play around with it, it'll tell you all these cool things. And even if you set it to forward and backward, it'll still tell you set it to all. So for our blunt damager, we don't actually need to do anything except for connecting the collider group. And just a few more housekeeping things to make everything all nice and pretty. We can add in a whoosh component with a whoosh script so that when we swing our weapon actually adds whooshing noises. Now that it's on here, simply with our blade, we can drag our whoosh to our whoosh point. And if you want your weapon to have an imbue, what we can do is go back to our material right here. And first off, I just want to change this so that our weapon looks a little bit more like the Master Sword because we can always play around with it. 
But to make it happen in view, an easy thing we can do, go to our mission right here and actually drag in one of these textures. Now I might make another video showing you exactly how to make it in Photoshop or something like that. But for the majority of weapons, dragging in the metallic map should be enough. So if we grab it, we grab this white right here, you'll notice the entirety of the weapon gets changed. But this should be good. So all we need to do is set it to 1, 1, 1. Although I don't think it really needs to be done like this anymore, but I'm still going to do it just because I'm used to it. And there we go. And then we can right click, go to Thunder Road and convert to Mose. Just keep in mind, if you do want your weapon to have metallic properties when you convert to Mo's using the Blade and Sorcery's own Thunder Road Lit Shader, you're going to need to have a metallic map in there. So to revert this, I can easily just go right here, change it from Thunder Road Lit to what we were at before, which was Universal Render Pipeline Lit. And this is exactly what it was. Except now we can go back to our metallic map, go all the way up, and set it to zero, and this is what it was before. Can delete this, and why don't we add in our gloss right here? And then from here again, we can right click, go to Thunder Road, convert modes. Simple. And now that we've done this, we can customize a bunch of other options like the normal strength, or in our case, the smoothness, which is now the metallic nature of the weapon. Although I like where it was at before between the 0.6 and 0.65. Our emission map is still set to 111, which is perfect, and our weapon will now use emissions from in game. And now that we've set this up, we want to go to the collider blade right here. And what we're going to do is generate an imbue mesh. So click this right here, and we'll notice there's an error. Ignore it. Don't worry about it. We have this ugly looking pink thing right here. Well, this pink thing actually lets the imbue particles be around where it's located. So if our weapon was imbued with fire and our pink thing was right here, the fire particles would be around this right here. But let's put it back. It's ugly. All we need to do is turn off the mesh renderer and that leaves it working properly. The last thing we need to do to give it an emission, now that we've generated the Mose, actually attach the emission map, is drag in our mesh or the part of the weapon that is getting imbued right here. And that's how you add emissions to weapons. If you want to make your weapon imbue slam or imbue shoot, what we can do is simply add something to the imbue shoot so where it gets fired from. What we want to do is create another game object. I'm just going to name it shoot point, and we want our blue arrow to be pointed upwards. Let's set it to negative 90. Go all the way up. I usually have it be a little bit in front of it. So you guys know when imbued with fire, the staffs shoot out flames. Well, that is what this can do now if we go back to our collider blade drag in our shoot point and now the fireballs will shoot directly from the tip of the sword if you wanted them to shoot from any other direction like let's say this way that's what you would need to do another thing you guys are going to want most likely is to make your weapons get bloody well all we need to do is add in the reveal decal script right here that simple we want to add it on whatever part of the weapon we want to get bloody but in our case we only have the one mesh so we add it right here and after having done this in order to actually get it working we'll need to add the components into our material so from here we go to reveal layers click on it and there are these new options so let's try it out click on auto fill layers and I am so happy that it did this. Now it automatically adds everything we'll need in order to make our weapon get bloody. So that saves a whole lot of time. But now our weapon can get bloody in game. And one last thing I want to show you real quick if you want to add in secondary handles. You can do that. Obviously the naming is very important. So we can name this something like handle 2. Don't have them both be the same. And we could easily add another handle. You know what? I'm going to do this for this video have a secondary handle right here and let's increase our axis length so we can grab for the majority of the blade right here and now that we've done all that let's go back to our parent game object and connect everything so with our handles you can just drag in your main handle right there and it will automatically fill it in our fly ref is when throwing the weapon which direction it will get thrown in so in our case it's a sword so we most likely want it to shoot in the direction of the blade right here so while we could add in the shoot point or create an entirely new game object what i'd recommend for a sword is simply just adding in the pierce transform as the fly ref 
for weapons that are very wonky or very weird when in game one thing you can do is add in a custom inertia tensor collider you check that it'll automatically create this thing for you now just remember it's different than making normal colliders don't turn it on don't add a physics don't do anything all we need to do is make sure that it surrounds the entirety of the weapon so this is what it looks like and we're just going to have to rotate it upwards like this so let's set it to negative 90 change our view of it and i think that's actually a pretty good guess so good for me on that let's drag it and have it be the entirety and there you go keep in mind this isn't something you need to do for every weapon only for weapons that are having physic issues for the majority of you you don't need to include it to be honest you won't need to include the shoot point or secondary handles for the most part as well but i believe that is all the fancy parts to creating a sword and i think i've gone over everything that i needed to so why don't we go back to this right here and what we need to do is actually export it so we can make it a weapon in the game. So grab the parent right here, drag it onto our project tab, and this is our weapon. Very cool. And we actually want an icon of it in the book, right? So now that this is all blue, after we've dragged it in, click on preview, generate icon. And this is how it looks. And if I double click on it, you guys will see. Just look at that. That's perfect. But I think we've gone over everything. One thing I do want to do just for this is uncheck the addressable so then I can retype it in. Normally it'll show up automatically under the addressables category, which I think is really annoying, especially if you're like me and you have a lot of different mods at once and you forget to change it over. But to actually put it in game, we want to go to window, asset bundler. I like putting this at this tab right here. We can unselect all these guys. And then we go to window, asset management, addressables, and then groups. And this is where we're actually going to place both of these. So create a new packed asset, right click, and rename it Master Sword or whatever your thing is. Right click, set as default, and we just want to go back to it. Click on both of these and simply drag them in just like that now one thing that i want to show you real quick is what i changed is normally this is automatically checked so if this is automatically checked it'll pop up right here in whatever is the default category but if we drag these both in there you go now right click simplify addressable names it'll change it to whatever these names currently are and then Make sure to select them both. One final thing that I like doing, especially if there's very similar names, we go to our addressable name wizard, put whatever you want right here. My name is just PyPop101's dot, and it'll add it to the beginning of it. One thing I highly recommend is do not ever add spaces to any of these. But now we just press apply, and there we go. PyPop101's Master Sword and Master Sword. The final thing we need to do is actually separate them, because they're two separate things. They can't be named the same. So... Our model or our weapon is this blue cube right here. And the icon is right here. So we can right click, change address, and we add dot icon. Capital I if you want to go with the base game conventional naming. Or if you're like me and you want to be different, I use the lowercase i just in case. So nobody will be able to make the same address as me. It would also be kind of weird if they used PyPop101's dot, but we're not going to get into it. Okay, so this is a good start. Now what we need to do is actually create the group. So we create the new asset group. Click on it right here. We have our new mod, which we're going to name Master Sword. Press enter. Now we go to the inspector while having clicked on this. If you want it to create a manifest for you, you can. You can simply just click on this. And are your mod name Master Sword, your description. Mod author is obviously the PyPop 101. Mod version 1.0 and then mod thumbnail. I've actually never used this. I'm not going to put anything in there just in case. And can't forget to actually name the folder. So Master Sword. Last up, we add in our address groups. I'm fairly certain we only need just the one, but let's select our Master Sword right here, or we can always type it in and search. Master Sword, there we go. It's automatically selected. And now that we've done that, make sure to check the asset bundler. We can actually build our group and we select the game executable path. 
So we click on it, and this is where our game is actually located, the EXE. If you don't know where it is or how you get there, you can always open up Steam, go to Blade and Sorcery, right-click, go to Browse Local Files, and it'll bring you directly to the EXE. And this is what we're going to want. So we can copy this path right here, exit out of that, get out of Steam, click on this, go to this, paste it in, press Enter, and it'll bring us to the location. You press open and there you go. And I believe I've completely covered how to make a weapon in Unity, so let's go make the Jasons and then try it out in game. Let's build our bundle group. If this is your first time building a weapon, it may take a long time. If you don't have a ton of stuff in your Unity, it won't, but my first time usually takes upwards of an hour. And it makes a nice ding when it's done if we go to our mod folder. We named it Master Sword, right? So here is our Master Sword folder. So I'm just going to show you how everything connects real quick. Let's go back to window, asset management, and let's go add in our groups. Click on Master Sword right here. We have our inspector. Master Sword, the folder name right here, folder name of course. We go into it. Looks like it did create a manifest for us, so that's good. Since we did make a weapon, we wanted to have both of these catalogs, the asset, and then the bundle right here. So if we double click on our JSON, here we go. Master Sword, mod description, author, version, you know, all this nice stuff. And now that we have this, we need to actually add in the JSON so that our game will be able to read that it's a mod. If you don't have a manifest, the game will not read it's a mod either. So if you don't want to make it through here, you can always go and then steal it from another mod. So just copy and paste it in. And for example, this one looks like this. Now we actually need to get our item JSON for the Master Sword. And if you don't know how to get to your mods folder, open up Steam again, right click, browse local files, click on data, streaming assets, mods. If it's not here, just start up the game one time, it'll automatically be created. But now we need to get our weapon JSON. So in order to do that, I already have these. What I'm going to say to you guys is we go into our default folder right here and we can take either the Blade and Sorcery JSON DB or the core. Now, there's two different ones. So these are our normal Blade and Sorcery JSONs and then the core ones does not include all of them. So I'd recommend getting and opening both. So in order to do that, I'm just going to get this one. It's the same process for both. So we copy it over. We can go to our mods and we paste it in. This is what it looks like. Now, what we need to do is change the ending of it to a zip. If you don't see this, go to view and check on file name extensions. So let's set this to a dot zip. Press enter. Might become unusable. Not. Double click on it. And here we go. Here are all the JSONs for Blade and Sorcery. Now, you can copy and paste them into your folder like I did, but what I'm going to do, since I already have them, is take a sword JSON. And I'm just going to take the sword long common because that's one of my normal weapons to do. So if we go back and delete this, and we go into our Master Sword and paste it in. Now, this is the Master Sword, so what I'm going to do is just copy the name right here. We change our item JSON. And when spawning in the weapon through spells or anything like that, our actual name that we reference is our ID. So this is very important. I always make sure that these are all the same. You can add in a awesome description. The author is obviously me. And this is where it gets important. Now, I don't think the close-up icon address really matters. I don't know why that was added in the first place, but what we need to take a look at is the prefab address and icon address. Those are the most important things. So if we go back to this, go back to our asset groups, and we open this up, this pipop101s.mastersword, that right there is the model. That is the prefab address. So we just paste it in, in between both of these quotation marks, and then the icon address, obviously what I named icon, and paste it in. And it doesn't necessarily matter if you have a close-up icon address or not, but I usually just keep them as both. If you want to change the category of whatever it is, you can change it right here. It's a normal sword, but I'm also going to just change it to exotics because it is a special one. 
Exotics is one of the name of the base game categories, if you haven't noticed. Scroll down, you get our weapon type, our slot. I always leave the slot as medium, not the large slot or the small one, because if it's medium, you can holster it on both your hips and on your back. The mass and drag is how heavy your weapon feels when swinging it around. I'd say this is a pretty decent amount, so what I'm going to do is just change it to one. And then mana regen multiplier. What I do on all my weapons is make it so if you're holding it, you can instantly cast abilities. Scroll down. If you want your weapon to fly towards the point using your fly ref, what we're going to do is change this to true and set this to 145. You can also change whether they're spin enabled or anything like that. That's not super important. But what is important is all of these right here. So if we go back to our model, you'll notice all of these were named specifically for a certain purpose. So just like how these needed to be named the exact same, so does this. So our transform name for the collider group, we named it Collider Blade. So we do this. If we don't want a weapon to have an imbue, we can easily just remove it. That it's not necessary. It's only necessary if you want your weapon to have it. Similarly, if you want your weapon to have the staff abilities, which we also do, we set this to crystal staff. And then since these were already done for us, pierce needs to be the same, of course, slash needs to be the same, and blunt needs to be the same. Since it only has one of each, that's fine. I usually change this to two hand because it does more damage. And I like it doing a ton of knockback, so what we can do is either set it to the two-hand so it does a little bit more, or what I like is setting to the mace two-hand, so it really does a lot of knockback when you hit them. After playing around with the interactables, I have found that the object handle light works the best, and since we have two, all we need to do is grab this, copy it, and paste it. Now, you guys will notice there is no comma right here because I just copied it and pasted it. Notice every other one in between has commas. We absolutely need it, because if we don't, it won't work. And just make sure that our secondary handle is also labeled as handle and handle two. And last but not least, our wish, what we named right here, is this right here. Now we have our completed weapon, Jason. And based on all the compression we did, it came out to a total of, let's check, less than four megabytes. That's awesome for a nice little sword like this. And a little side note, if your weapon does not build for some reason and even says that, just make sure that the build path and the build location from the addressable group is done properly. So if we click on this, build path set to local, load path, we want it to be obviously set to local load path. And then build it like normal. And now our weapons can spawn a game. If you guys like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. Thanks for watching.